Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Maxwell and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, what's up? I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast and today I'm here with Jesse Maxwell. How are you? Hi Sarah, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. No problem. Like I was saying before, I'm super, super hyped about this new track, No Stive. So how are you feeling? I am really excited about it. Yeah, it's uh, this is kind of this the start of the new album. So it's the first single um, and, and it feels like it's starting off really strong. Um, I love the song. It's it's this whole album is super close to my heart. So I'm really proud of everything we've done. Um, I've, I'm really proud of the whole process of it. Like we've made a music video, which is like new to me. I've never done that before. And um, yeah, it's just it, it's been it's been different in this type of process, it feels a lot more open, a lot more natural. I like it. And that's the best feeling, like just getting it all out there and then- All out there. Eventually people will hear it and hopefully resonate with it. That is the goal for sure, absolutely. Amazing. So we're gonna get back to the track a little later on, but what is your fondest musical memory? My fondest musical memory? Um, not too long ago, uh, I don't even remember when this was. I feel like so much has happened in like a month um, and nothing at all. Uh, we played a sold out show at Supermarket, oh which was like probably one of the best nights of my life. Um, it was just so like the energy was electric. Everything, everything went great. Like, you know, the I played with a six piece band um, and they all sounded amazing. And it, it was just such a surreal night to have everyone there. I think a lot of times we get lost as artists and, and creators is like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So you don't always see how things flourish and like having something tangible in front of you to like see people's reactions and vibe with it. So that was that was really fun to me. I'm gonna remember that night forever. What is your uh, track to like sing live? What's my favorite track to sing live? Yeah. Oh, um, I have different ones for different reasons, but what blew my mind was um, it happened at, at supermarket and also happened at the horseshoe tavern uh we played my song undone and and everyone was like singing the chorus and like that was so weird and beautiful and i really loved that um so i i think i really enjoy singing that one live just because that's like a huge blessing to you know have people sing sing your songs to you i think that's that's so cool um so that one for that reason and then just for singing purposes i really enjoy uh we do this like medley of our song nefertiti and temple um and we kind of like blend it into one we start with nefertiti we transition to temple and like that's just such a fun song to play um it's so different than the studio version and like i'm i'm very big on making the live experience different from the studio because it's a different medium and you give people a different experience so uh that one that one i love playing live for sure it's like super intense. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, whenever you come to Montreal, I'll be there for sure. So are you in Montreal? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and performing live, what does it look like? How could you explain your live shows? Uh, performing live. Well, we have, um, so we have the six piece band. So it's me on, I play keys and I also sing. And then we have two amazing backup vocalists, um, Samaza and Jamila. We have Andreas on the guitar um, who's also my co-producer and we have Justin on the bass and then we have Lucas on the drums um, and what does it look like we kind of just show up and like um, it was interesting before I started playing live shows because I hadn't really played my stuff live we've been stuck in COVID for years yeah. um, and it's all I, I released everything during that time so I hadn't really known how it was going to translate and how how it was going to be and like I'm very much a down-tempo artist so I thought it was going to be like chill, but we get really hype. Um, and, and, and I love that. You know what I mean? Like people are into it. And like, even this, this the more down tempo ones, they're still like heavy and they hit and like, um, so it's nice. So we just like, we have a great time. Um, I let loose without a care in the world. Um, and just like sing my heart out. And, and I, you know, from the reaction of it, like people, people are very much on that level as well, which is great. How do you feel people are going to react to this new song, Nosedive? I hope they love it. Um, <laughs> it's a different approach for me, at least, at least in the way that I see it. Like I've, the more that I make music, I think I move out of this idea of like, I need things to fit into a certain popular structure. Yeah. Um, 
And that was something I experimented a lot, like on this song, on the rest of the album, and like even the stuff that I'm making today. It's just like it's different, and I I, I like that. So I, I hope that people will connect with that um, because I'm I'm purely creating based on feel um, rather than what I think I should do. And um, yeah, I mean, for me, the song just feels really cool. I love the vocal arrangement in it. I love I love the the backing instrumental. Um, it just kind of, I, I tried to like set a mood. Uh, Andreas also worked on the song as well. And like together we just, you know, started from nothing. We didn't really plan what we were gonna do. It just happened organically. Um, but I really like it though. I think I think people really enjoy it. And because you said that you like, you write based off of like what you feel like writing and not like exactly based off of like certain rules or like guidelines. Um, so your creative process, do you create when you get an idea or do you like have time set to create? Does that make sense? I never make time to create. I think it just is constant, yeah. um, which is great, but it's also like four in the morning and I have an idea and I'm like, I need to get this out. <laughs> so it never, it doesn't have a clock. It's just whenever it comes, and I can't control it. And if I, if I don't get it out, it's gone. Um, that's just the thing about our brains, you know, especially like a, a thought at four in the morning, you're just like, what's happening. And I'm waking up. I'll never, I'll never remember it again. Um, so it's, it's very free like that for sure. And, um, yeah, totally. It just happens whenever. I could just imagine you at four in the morning, like, like belting out like a verse and then like your neighbors. <laughs> Yo, on, I'm like eyes closed. I'm just like, <laughs> literally like having dreams about a whole song literally yeah <laughs> yeah and I, you know what I think the best ideas come when it's not forced like that you know like I I have tried to write more forced like I've done some co-writes which has been interesting and like you still get a good product out of it but there's nothing like not having any boundaries on creation and just letting it happen totally organically mm -hmm. and have you been like co-writing on zoom or in person I've been, I'm trying to think, I, I think it's all been on Zoom. I've had one or two co reds that have been in person, um, okay. but the rest is on Zoom. Yeah, it's, we very much resorted to, to Zoom nowadays, but it works, especially because like I, so I produce for uh, some artists and like a lot of the artists that I produce for are not in Toronto. So like mm -hmm. I, there, there's some in the States, there's some, there's some in Europe. So it, there's no other way to do it. Um, so it's a great platform, you know, and, and you can be creative with it and there are limitations, but um, if I just like, especially in a producer role, if I try to like um, just make the artist feel comfortable, or if I'm in a co-write, make the, make the other artist feel comfortable, like it, it does its job for sure. If you could describe your music as an animal, which animal would it be and why? <laughs> um, whoa, love that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say, I want to give like a, like a cheesy answer, like a lion, but something, no, like an animal that's more like stealth than that. Um, maybe like, maybe like a, maybe like a leopard or something. Okay. I'm not sure. For me, I, the way I view music is like, I, I think it like, it takes its time, but like, I try to be really bold with it, you know? And like, I do things that, that are out there, um, that are memorable. So um, it's not going to like attack you like a leopard would, but it's stealth and, and, and quiet, but like creeps up on you. And then you're here and you're like, whoa, I'm in it. <laughs> so it's more of like a psychedelic thing in a way, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and you mentioned how this is the first release of something bigger. So what can you tell us about that? Uh, well, this so this is the first release of uh, the album, and um, the album is going to be coming out later in 2022. Um, this one for me did two things. I think it set a good tone for the album, um, and it also bridged the gap of like my previous stuff because I, I think I had a very specific sound in my previous work, and it's like kind of evolving as I evolve. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a uh, I think it does both of those things for sure. Cause the, you know, for me, the, the album um, is like ambient. It's cool. It's a little sexy. It's a little dark. I use the word nocturnal a lot when I describe my music, just that that's how I feel. And it also is like probably my state of mind when I create. Um, and, and so I, I think that this, like, I think nosedive does a, a very good job of like setting that tone. Um, so that's in terms of like the music stuff. And then 
we have like the music video for Nosedive. We filmed a beautiful live set of another song and then we have another music video. Um, so I, I think I, I'm really excited about it. Like, I really think it's like, it's, it's starting, you know, fresh on a, on a good new foot and like, it's, we're just going to be like releasing and it's, it's very like artistic driven. Um, I, I think people really connect with it. And my last question for you is who are your favorite artists right now? Oh my gosh. So many. Um, who are my favorite artists right now? I've been listening to Sev Delisa's Ice On mm -hmm. on repeat. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've heard, of, I've known about this album for forever, but some, you know, like sometimes you have albums where you just like, it comes up a year later in your mind and you just will not stop listening to it. So that's what I've been on. I've been on the Sev Delisa train. Um, I've been listening to a lot of like FKA Twigs is uh, like EP2, Melissa and LP1. And then um, a bunch of James Blake. Um, I listen, I mean, Frank Ocean is probably, I always say this, but like Frank Ocean is probably my number one of all time. Um, yeah, it just, I've been, I've also been like pretty into Labyrinth lately because I've been watching Euphoria and he, he scores the whole thing and it, he's just such a wicked producer. It's crazy. Totally agreed. Well, I can mm. wait for what's to come next from you. And thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much for having me on, sir.